This is the second quiz question, and it's going to be marked by Mobin, so see Mobin if you have any uh, further queries. The idea here was that we had a tank shaped like this with two jets coming out of it. The tank was full of water, air over here, 12 meters of elevation and 8 meters of elevation. And the diameters of each of these jets after they contracted down to the flow out here uh, is different. This D1 is 20 centimeters and D2 is 10 centimeters. So these are fairly big jets. And the question is, what are the velocities U1 and U2? And what are the mass flow rates for each of those two jets? So we can write Bernoulli's equation along a streamline from some location H0 up here, either down to 1 or down to 2. Both equations will look the same and we'll wind up with H0 plus U0 squared over 2G plus P0 over rho G. The amount of energy that we had up here is equal to the total amount of energy that we have at location 1 or the total amount of energy that we have at location 2. The pressures at all three locations are atmospheric so they cancel out. Up here at the surface, if the reservoir is large, and we're making the assumption for now that it's large, then the velocity of the surface will be zero. So that'll cancel out as well. If we look at just the first half of the equation, then we've got the velocity coming out of the jet, we've got the difference in heights, that's all that's involved. Rearranging, the velocity will be square root of 2 g delta h. And for location 1, plugging in the numbers, we get 15.34 meters per second. Area, pi d squared over 4, so the area of number 1 is 0 0.03142, that's 1, 2, one hundredth the value of pi. Mass flow, rho times average velocity times area, density times velocity times area. Plugging in the numbers, we get 482 kilograms per second coming out at location one. So almost half a ton per second. That's a lot of water. Flow at two, same equation, U2, 19.81 meters per second. So it's quite a bit further down, but the velocity is only a little bit higher. That's because of the V squared effect. The area, one quarter what it was at one. There's a factor of four there because the diameters have a factor of two, and area goes as diameter squared. And then multiplying through to get the mass flow, 156 kilograms per second coming out down here. For the section, second part of the question, we're considering a cross-sectional area of the tank of just one square meter. So this is much smaller. It's not a large tank, as we assumed in the first part of the question. And it drops off linearly down to location two. And we want to know how that changes the answer. Well, we know the total mass flow. It's 482 kilograms plus 156 kilograms per second is 638 kilograms per second is the mass flow moving down the tank. We can figure out what the velocity is at which stuff is moving in here. That'll be the mass flow divided by density and area of that top. and The area is just now one square meter. That gives us 0.638 meters per second is the rate at which the fluid is moving down this way. That means that's the rate at which this surface is dropping. The surface is moving downwards at more than a half a meter per second, so that's reasonably quickly. That suggests that maybe we can't treat U0 as equal to zero anymore, as we assumed here for the large tank. So if U0 isn't equal to zero, then U1 will be equal to the square root of 2G delta H, just like before, minus U0 squared, all square root. Do that calculation, and even with 0.638 meters per second, we wind up with U1 equal to 15.33 meters per second as compared to 15.34. So the change really is negligible, even though this velocity is fairly significant. The second part of that question asks, what is the value of du dt, 
the rate of change of u2 with time when the depth is as indicated. So as the uh, water in the tank gets shallower and shallower, u2 will be slowing down. If u2 squared is equal to 2gh, that's that uh, height to that moving surface, then taking the derivative of both sides, 2u2 du2 dt with respect to time, equal to 2g times dh dt. u and t are, and h are the only things changing with time. Taking the u2 across to the other side, we wind up with du2 dt equal to g times negative u0, because that's how the height is changing, dh dt is negative u0 meters per second, divided by u2, equal to, plugging in the numbers, negative 0.316 meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. 